What's up, everybody? Uh, this, uh, for those of you that don't know, is a pre-release kit. Um, I'm sure there's been a fair amount of you that have gone to a pre-release event before. Uh, if you haven't, uh, it's a pretty fun little thing to do. Um, basically, um, we'll go ahead. I already started opening the back here. So I'm just keep finishing up on it. Um, basically, what a pre-release kit is is uh, it comes with six uh, booster packs inside Yee -yee. of it. It's got a promo card in it and a uh, like a D20, like a, a countdown life. You yeah, know, you got it. Um, so basically, you go to a pre-release event, and usually this happens like a week before the actual release for a set. And you can buy these roughly uh, $25. Um, if they're a lot higher than that, they shouldn't be. Um, but with $25, you get this little kit. And a lot of people do like a pre-release draft with these. They'll uh, basically try to make a deck out of the cards they pull out of these booster packs. Uh, they're usually provided with some kind of lands or something like that. Uh, all in all, it's a fun little event to do. Um, but basically, we're just going to go through one of these. And we'll show you what, what all you get in this. So, open up. It's got a, it's an awesome little box. I love the little boxes that come with these. Um, they are always so neat. And I'm going to end up keeping that for something. Um, so... You left out the best part. Oh, oh <laughs> I forgot the dice. Or the die, excuse me. Nice, right, so there's another red one. I have a ton of these little red ones. I love them. Um... Just got a little insert and so yeah okay because okay. he loves the color red i do all right so uh inside of this is two three four five six booster packs and there's like a promo card over here um also comes with this uh it's kind of given the story of this uh, the set, uh, Throne of Eldraine is about the disappearance of High King Kenrith. Um, yada 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 yada. That's great. Um, it also tells you how to actually build your pre-release deck. Um, it's usually a little bit smaller than a regular deck. You know, a regular deck usually has at least 60 cards in it. Um, it explains that there's 40 uh, spells, creatures. Uh, trying to vary your mana cost to do your mana curve, that kind of thing. Um, it's actually, it's, it's like a little neat wow. little insert. Uh, I don't know if you noticed this, but on here, usually like Travis said, a standard deck is, uh, 60 cards. On here, it said, pre-release decks are one or two colors and have exactly 40 cards. Mm -hmm. So, that's pretty awesome. Usually, that's just because you've got only six packs to work with. So... Usually, if you were to try to make a 60-card deck out of that, you'd basically have to use every card you got. Yeah. And that really doesn't work, especially if you're only going to make it like one or two uh, colors. Uh, this is the promo card that came with it. It is uh, all full, and it's got, you can always tell a promo card, it's got a date on it right here whenever uh, the whole thing happened. Um, Castle Emberith enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a mountain. Tap to add one red. And two red and one and tap. Creatures you control get plus one plus zero oh until end of turn. Hmm. It's a nice little uh, utility land. I like that. And I love this. Uh, this is literally just like a little cardboard divider. Uh, you can use that in any of your uh, 100 card plus deck boxes that you have. We actually have We have all kinds of them. I mean, I'm sure you guys do too. Uh, it's kind of like the bigger deck boxes. Um, this will fit right in there. You can... Divide your decks out. They're awesome. Um, I like that. I like that little pack there. So we're actually just gonna, instead of like doing like a pre-release deck and everything like that, because you know the pre-release has already happened, we're actually just gonna split these boosters up real quick and we're gonna open them. And there's, there's like a running theory with uh, the pre-release uh, packs. A lot of people believe that the pre-release packs have a lot better cards in them. Um, historically from my experience, they do have good cards in them, but I mean, that I think that's any booster pack really. Um, but I mean, it's hard not to get superstitious whenever you're just like, oh, these, these are special. This one right here with the, the dragon that's shown in this and, and on these boosters 
particularly for my birthday, one of my friends got me one. And, um, yeah, I had an awesome pull out of one with a dragon on it. So I'm kind of like, I always lean towards the dragons when it comes to the throne of Eldraine. Oh, yeah, definitely. Boosters. We got really lucky. She pulled a full extended art Garrick uh, out, out of the out of one pack, out of just one pack that we had. Um, so I'll go ahead and let you pick a pack out of there. Obviously, I'm gonna go with a dragon. Let's see. We'll go with this one. And then the rest have these like Embereth Knight, I believe is the name is. I'll take one of these. Mm. And I'm gonna take a dragon. I'll take the last one. And well, I'll take the last round. So uh, we'll go ahead and let me get this out of the way. But remember, this is the Throne of Eldraine. <laughs> Doing some name dropping. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and open them up and see what we get. Oh, we were actually just talking about this card the other day. Um, the uh, Seven Dwarves card. Yeah. Um, how you can actually have more than seven or you can actually have seven of this card in your deck whereas normally you can only have four of a named card um i actually saw uh online somebody had made a standard deck centered around seven dwarves uh they used all kinds of spark copies and everything like that so um i'm actually pretty interested in making one of those um i love a lot of these cards a lot of them are just they're hilarious to me. Run away together. I, I love it. It's like the Frankenstein monster trope. Yeah. And uh, we've seen some with gingerbread men and uh, the glass slipper. We've seen so many. The, the trailer for Throne of Eldraine. Yes. Like, it cracked us if up. If you have not seen it, Magic the Gathering's official page on YouTube has the official trailer for the Throne of Eldraine. It is great. It is wonderful. If you haven't watched it, go. Just go watch it. The War of the Spark trailer was good, too. Yes. It, it was really good. It's my favorite. Um, Venerable Knight. Oh, Grumgully. I actually really like Grumgully. Uh, a very uh, weird kind of commander. If you were, if you guys are into commander decks, he's actually a, a pretty crazy little budget commander. And uh, a re At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a non-land, non-token permanent. If that player can't, they discard a card and they lose two life. You draw a card, you gain two life, and you create a 2-2 two -two white knight creature token with vigilance. Then you sacrifice doom foretold. That's a lot of stuff happening on one card. Yeah. Wow. That's a great little card, though. Forest and a nice little three little piggy. Love it. So I have Embrith Paladin, Shining Armor, Return to Nature. I love this card. I have one of these. Um, you choose one. You destroy a target artifact, an enchantment, or you exile a card from a graveyard. So I love that. Got something for everybody. Yeah, uh, definitely. Got a Crashing Drawbridge. Oh, looky here, gingerbread <laughs> man. Okay, so like that right there is the most hilarious thing I've seen in these cards. Because, I, I mean, it is everything that you could ever think of storybook related, it has it in this. Yeah, they, they use a lot of storybook tropes, a lot of Grimm's fairy tales, yes. that kind of thing. Um, it's a great set. Absolutely love this. And, and, you know, it's crazy. Uh, oh, nice. Oh, and... Uh, Alternate frame. Yeah, and another thing about these cards is if... I mean, say you haven't bought anything out of the Throne of Eldering yet because you may have read some reviews and you weren't really 100% sure on how to feel about it or you're just like, ah, I'm going to just stick to whatever. It's because, hard to follow War of the Spark. Yeah. I mean, you're getting a Planeswalker out of every single pack as opposed to now. It's like, a lot of us are spoiled. We're used to getting those Planeswalkers yeah. now, you know? Because... With these, they've got the alternate art, you know, which are awesome. We've opened several of these. Yeah. But another cool thing about these is they have a storybook. Um, it's like an adventure. So you can, A, pay the sorcery cost, put it in exile, 
and then bring it back from your graveyard, you know, from the exile to play the creature part on it, which would be the cost up here, which is one black and one. Sure. Then you would have to go by this. Or you can just bring it straight out and just pay the cost for the creature and play it on out. So They're super versatile. Yeah. I mean, they really are. I mean, you can you can get that creature right out. If, you, if you're low on creatures on the field, you can, you can just play this creature. And this one even returns a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So that's an awesome little thing. I, I love that. Kinda. Yeah. And also just great art. Like the, the art in this set is phenomenal it yeah. is really great we've actually got uh a lot of these alternate uh frame cards and like uh, the extended art cards we've got a lot of them framed up in, up in the magic cave yeah uh we might actually we might do a video where we just show you guys a lot of those uh, for those unfamiliar and uh we'll just we'll go from there here's my rare acclaimed contender i actually have one of these You're nice um, you got it in your uh your rowan deck didn't yeah. you yeah um, and by the way, it's a Planeswalker deck that we got whenever it first came out. Um, so, if you want, I mean, I'm going to read about it. So, when a claim contender enters the battlefield, if you control another knight, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a knight, aura, equipment, or legendary artifact card from among them um, and put them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your hand in any random order. It's a great or little card. Library, not hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's but, it's really it's killer. I mean, if you, we're gonna end up making a video for the improve the Rowan and uh, then, Planeswalker deck. Yeah, here's one of these on the adventure. Um, so, for example, um, say me and Travis is playing. I wanted to exile something, or I wanted to bring something back from my graveyard that really would benefit the situation that I'm going with now, and I've got the mana to pay it. Um, you would pay the sorcery, which is one black and one, and after you return your target creature from your graveyard to your hand, you exile it, you lay it on this, move it out of the way. That way you can then pay this cost and bring it back, but you have to do this during your turn. So, little just... 411 there for you. Mm -hmm. I, I love that little card too. Like the tokens in this set kind of, they went above and beyond with their tokens on this because there's uh, also one of the big mechanics of this set is uh, food tokens. Uh, food tokens, uh, they're like um, little artifacts that are generated by various abilities in the set and you can pay two and tap and sacrifice that artifact and actually gain three life. Um, I've actually got a green and white deck that's centered completely around food. I mean, that's, that's, all, that's the whole thing mm -hmm. is a lot of food. Um, but, uh, we can get into that later. Um, so here's my next pack. I went ahead and already opened it. You probably you heard had me over a fairy there. godmother. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The glass slippers and like Cinderella, that kind of thing. Actually, this is a Cinderella card too, really. Yeah. Uh, Turning the pumpkin into the carriage. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, this is a, it's a great card. I love this card. Um, great for mono blue decks. All right. Cauldron Familiar. And, oh, here's our rare. Lockmere Serpent. Four, one blue and one black. It's a 7-7 seven, seven with Flash. Wow. Uh, those of you that don't know, Flash is, basically, you can play this card as if it were an instant. So, you can, you can essentially play it almost any time. Um, for one blue and sacrifice an island, it can't be blocked this turn. For one black and sacrifice a swamp, you gain one life and draw a card. And for one blue and one black and exile five target cards from an opponent's graveyard, return Lockmere Serpent from your graveyard to your hand. Activate this ability only any time you can cast a sorcery. Wow. You wow. wouldn't think that would be something that would be in this set. I mean, I that's crazy. It's a killer card. I like that. I like that a lot. And look at that. Look at that. This is like a 30-something dollar card right now. Uh, foil, Great Hinge, uh, 7 and 2 green. The spell costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. You can tap, add 2 green, and you gain 2 life. And whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it and draw a card. That awesome it's killer. Pool. It is killer. We've got our mythic there. And look, this card right here it basically just paid for our pre-release pack that we got. Really great card. Wow, that's a really good pull. Um, token. <laughs> it's kind of hard to follow that. Yeah. That's a great card. It's going to be awesome. hard to beat. 
Let's hope we can get something. Mm -hmm. So we got a lonesome unicorn. I think uh, this is one that Travis was talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. um, Garenberg Squire. We had some witches. <laughs> <laughs> we got Dwarven Mine. That's mm. a pretty good little mountain. Um, it's got some good utility on it, you know. Enters the battlefield tapped unless you control three or more mountains. And then it says when it enters the battlefield untapped, you create a three, or I'm sorry, a one one dwarf creature token. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I like a lot of those. They have a special land card like that for every color in Eldraine. They each do something like a little nifty little thing like that. We got some uh, artifact going here. Weapon in uh, the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it. You tap it and move a plus one plus one counter from it onto a target creature. And you activate this ability only time you would cast a sorcery, which is just during your turn. Got another arch uh, artifact. It's a wall. Ooh. And we've got one of the uh, art. Um, Alternate frames. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Excuse me. I can't even think. Uh, but yeah, another storybook kind of tale going on here. Wow, I love that card. The, yeah, oh, that's crazy. That's awesome. And we have a dragon. Hey, hey you just got the dragon that was on the pack. Yes. Nice. <laughs> Let's see. Pretty, pretty cool. Hey, little fella. A lock dragon. I wonder if that's like the Loch Ness monster. <laughs> Frogify. I love Man, this card. Man, this card really gets me because for some reason I always play Travis whenever he plays this on me. <laughs> it's crazy because you enchant a creature and the enchanted creature uh, loses all their abilities and is a blue frog creature with the base power and toughness of 1-1. One, one. I'm sure that has nothing to do with the fact that you hate frogs. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, and here's my rare. We have a fairy rogue. Nice, a for mythic. For two blue and one, it's a mythic. It's a story um, adventure. So the instant on this is you return target non-land permanent from an op opponent controls to its owner's hand. Then uh, the actual brazen borrower has flash flying and can only block um, creatures with flying. Wow. So, that is a super fast, super aggressive card. Yeah. And then we have a foiled. Hmm, nice. Curious pair. Hansel and Gretel. Yeah. And here is what he was talking about. Create a food token. And then it says the next style of the card, put it on the adventure, and let it go. Oh, fairy token. Nice. Yep. Awesome. We got so, some good pulls off of these. I mean, we can't, we can't argue with the whole thing. I mean, pre-release kit, and we got some good pulls from it. I mean, that... The great hinge pull. That that was crazy. All right. All right. This is my last pack. Um, let's see some. Uh, oh, hey. Wolf Scory. Three little pigs. Um, corridor monitor. I love this. I have uh, I have a couple Tezzeret decks. And uh, this is like a must. You can make some really good combos with this little thing. Uh Got like a Voltaic Key or, or anything like that. I mean, you can make some great little combos. I mean, super cheap. It was a 1-4 for two. Uh, let's see. Another Ginger Brute. Oh, cool. Witch Cottage. Basically, this was like uh, the Dwarven Mine. If uh, you got three swamps, it comes in untapped. And if it comes in the battlefield untapped, you can return target creature card from your graveyard and put it on top of your library. That's an awesome little thing from uh, just a common land. Uh, Revenge of Ravens, Red Cat Melee, Kenneth's Transformation, that's a good card, love that. Oh, and our, her rare is the Wicked Wolf. A 3-3 three, three for a 2 and 2 green. And when Wicked Wolf enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. And you can sacrifice a food to put a plus one plus one counter on it, and it gains indestructible until end of turn. Tap it. That's killer, I like that's that. That's awesome. Yeah, really utilizing that food mechanic. Uh, and then an island and an actual food token. Nice. Pretty good pull. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, my three, I love them. You've, raised, you've set the bar for me. I don't think I can top it. <laughs> you never know. You never know. All right. So we have another lonesome unicorn. Witching well. Mm -hmm. Fell the pheasant. Garenberg paladin. Eye collector. Scalding cauldron. 
brimstone trebuchet, trebuchet. <laughs> crashing drawbridge have one of those in the other one tall as a beanstalk lucky clover whenever you cast an adventure instant or sorcery spell copy it you might choose new targets for the copy whoa that's not bad for two yeah and we have joust all right my rare is castle garenbrig Mm. So it enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a forest. You can tap it, add one, or you can pay two and two green. Tap it, add six green. Whoa. Spend this mana only to cast creature spells or activate abilities of creatures. That's awesome. That I is. like that little card. Then we have a spinning wheel. Rumple still skin. Yes. Nice. It's an artifact. You tap it and add one mana of any color, or you can pay five and tap. Tap target creature. Forest and just <laughs> an advertisement the, for uh, Magic the Alien Arena. Yeah, pretty much. Well, I don't know about you, hon, but I think these are some great pulls. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. I just don't know if it'll uh, ever top my Garrick the Cursed Huntsman pull, but oh, sure. I say that was a great pull. I don't know. That Great Hinge was a pretty good pull, too. That was pretty good. Mm -mm, that's crazy. All right, guys. Well, uh, that's basically all for now. Um, if uh, you guys got any kind of like suggestions or questions or anything like that, leave a comment down below. Um, Be sure you, to subscribe and like these videos. Yeah, if you like what we're doing, just uh, throw a subscribe on there. Just hitting one button. And uh, if you like the direction the channel is going in, let us know. If you don't like something, let us, yeah, just say something, you know. Um, we're really trying to grow this and, and expand from here, so... Well, that's it. Light up.